Guru, or barbecue and grilling is made tasty. I'm Brandon Tanner, and today we're going to do uh, some pork, pulled pork. So I've got a couple uh, pork shoulder, pork butts here. Um, and if you like this type of content, please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that like and never miss another video like this one. <laughs> All right, so you know we've I've done quite a few different uh, pulled porks, and typically I do it really low and slow, like at 180 for you know overnight, and then kick up to 225 and eventually 250 to get them done, which sometimes takes you know 17 to 20 some odd hours. And so I know a lot of folks kind of get a little bit nervous about that long of a cook. So this one I'm gonna do a little bit different. I'm gonna do it more of where I'm gonna start at 225 and then I'm gonna wrap them after six hours. Um, and then we'll just see how long it takes. I'll try to post some of the temperatures. I'll, I'll be using, you know, tracking them with a temp probe. Um, with an app, so hopefully that'll come out well and I'll be able to share some of those so you can see how it performs um, and so that I can share the exact times. I got these pork butts from a local meat market and this is bone-in, that's what I like the best because it, they kind of hold together better and from my perspective it just it's just a better route to go but you know you can do it without the bone if, if, uh, if that's all you can get. Um, but anyways and these look they're little, they're, they're, this one's probably 10 pounds and I think this one's is about nine or eight so it's a little bit smaller so you know I'll probably I've got a little bit more of a hotter spot on my <clears throat> grill that I'll put the bigger one on and I'll put this one on the it's a little bit cooler and then we'll just see what the temperatures get you know I'm gonna target an internal temperature of just under 200 degrees so we'll see where we are then and I'm actually gonna let these rest um, for probably a couple hours in a cooler after they've cooked still wrapped to really let that meat break down <clears throat> and that's something else that you might consider if you're cooking for a pretty good group and you've got folks coming over and you're trying to hit a timeline. Um, you know, I like to do it the day before because then I have all the time I need to do it. And then I pull it and then I bag it. And then when we reanimate it, I actually put butter in a, you know, in, on a, in a pan or whatever and kind of fry it up that way. And it really reanimates good. You can add in some of the, the seasoning again. And so what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to use mustard, yellow mustard is my base. And if you don't like mustard, no big deal, it doesn't taste like mustard when it, when it does it. It just helps break down the fibers. And then this is a, a Plowboy's Bullvine Bold, that's what I typically like to use. It's just such a good seasoning on pork. And so, you know, I'll, I'll put that on there. So I like to let mine sit for a minimum of 12 hours once it's marinated and I like it to be in the refrigerator but without it being covered. So it really starts helping break the meat down, get that penetration going for those seasonings. That's how I do it. You know, you can do it different ways, but I wouldn't do less than, you know, eight to 10 hours. I like 12 minimum as far as marinating goes. And then we'll smoke them, wrap them, and then we'll pull them. So it should be pretty good. You gonna help me make a mess here? Yeah, All right. I'm gonna make a mess. <laughs>
All right, so we had this on for right at 15 hours, and it got right to uh, you know 200 degrees, which is where I was shooting for it before we rested it. And I rest it for you know this is two hours. You can do an hour. I do an hour minimum. I like two hours for me, just to really let it kind of break down. Um, and then you know as you can see, I use the pink butcher paper for the wrap. You know the Texas style. Oftentimes they use foil, which is fine. You can do that too. I just find that the pink butcher paper helps you with the bark a little bit more and it doesn't get as steamed and as mushy on the outside as you do with the foil. Um, but taste and preference deal. But I mean this thing smells ridiculously good. So I haven't even taken a look at it. I've only, you know, when I put it in there, I've seen it. So we're going to take a look and see what we got. It smells good though, right? Yeah. A little bit of mess. And I can feel that the thing just wanting to fall apart in my hands, <laughs> bringing it up. Let's see if I can this side of my mouth. Oh, we'll have some tonight. Oh, okay. So, you know, the bone comes right out. I mean, that is quality pulled pork right there. And our dog is going to absolutely love this. We <laughs> give these to our dog. But how about we try something right off the bone? Ooh. Oh, my goodness gracious. Wow. This is just awesome. I'll show some pictures as I pull it so you can take a look at it. Beautiful smoke ring, tender, juicy, flavorful. I can taste the rub, the bark, the whole nine yards. This is delicious. So, man, if you like this type of content, please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell so you never miss another video like this one. <laughs> thank, you, thank you for the support. This is fantastic. Man. You're just gonna love this Hi, welcome to Virtual Eats Barbecue. What? <laughs>